Hello Grinder School. This is CF the Natural. And today I am playing some 2 PLO on uh, black chip poker. Unfortunately, uh, over here on table 2, I've got the queens with a suit against a raise. Oh, I'll call. Ah, timed out. Okay. Um, here, boy, these tables go really quick in terms of time. Um, I'm playing some 2 PLO here on black chip poker. Um, I've played here a couple of times, not very much. They don't have a lot of games going, and that's the reason I'm at 2 PLO versus a higher limit. I'm normally playing 10 PLO these days, but um, we don't have any 10 PLO games. We don't have any uh, 5 PLO games going. There's just these 2 PLO and then uh, some 25 PLO. I think there's only one game at 25 PLO that was going. Let me see here. No, there's two. Two 25s. We've got these two here at two. And then you see, oh, there is a, yeah, two cent. That's it. There's there's nothing else in between. So I thought for a change of pace, I would uh, do um, this site. Okay, table one. Um, we're double suited. Our side cards are pretty crappy. I'm going to try to limp in and see if I can see a flop. Uh, I don't do this very often, but we got some loose passive players here, and maybe we can see a flop uh, with a double suited hand. And uh, you know, if we hit something great, if not, we let it go. I don't think it's really strong enough to raise from under the gun in late position. I would say yes here in table one, but not under the gun. So I'm going to fold it, or uh, I, on occasions I will limp. This guy min raid, we're obviously not going to fold for for one big blind for two cents. So we'll call. Really terrible play, but you can see he's 85-17. He's a bad player. Unfortunately, of course, the suit that comes is not either of the suits that we hold, so we're just going to have to give up this hand. Black Chip is on the same network as Carbon Poker. I don't know how many of you have ever played here. Um... It just doesn't get a ton of traffic. Uh, we'll check here on table two. We don't have much. Here on table one, our queens aren't really good against four opponents with an ace on the board. Table two, we have sort of a gut shot here, I guess. Six, seven, yeah. We don't have enough to bet here, obviously. We have a straight now. But unfortunately, there's there's three to a flush on the board. Uh, we're going to fold on table one, obviously. And now the board pairs. Um, we're only against one opponent, though, here. So I'm going to bet my straight. And he lets it go. So against multiple opponents, I'm, I'm probably never really going to bet there. Too easy for somebody to have, you know, a better hand on a paired paired flush board like that. I have a big pot going here on table one, so somebody's got something. Looks like two pairs. And that's about it. Yeah, two pairs, aces and jacks. Okay. Pretty big pot for just two pair, but uh, now we're gonna fold this on table two. It's not even worth completing. It's a junker hand here on table one. Um, do we want to call a raise here with a suited ace? No. It's close. Our cards are somewhat connected, but we're going to be out of position to everybody at the table. So I don't think it's really going to be worth it. This player over here, Locke, is pretty bad. Right before we got uh, the recording started, I flopped top set against him. And we got it all in on the flop, and all he had was a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. And, of course, he hit his gut shot and so won, a, you know, 100 big blinds, uh, $2 from me. So he's a pretty poor player. We'll be looking to hopefully get involved with him. Um, yeah, I'm going to min-raise here. This isn't a really strong hand, but I am on the button on table two. Here on table one... Um, we have a suited ace on the button. I'll call. Both people call on table two. 
Uh, we don't hit a lot here on this flop. Oh, this guy raises. Um, okay, on the button we'll call with our suited ace. Here on table two, we just don't hit enough. We're going to fold this. Table one, well, now we get some big bets. We get a full pot bet and a call. Uh, we do have a flush draw here, but it's a paired board, and so I'm going to let it go. If the board wasn't paired, I might call one bet with the uh, nut flush draw, but not on a paired board like that. It's too easy for somebody to have uh, a full house. Table uh, two here will be folding this. Let's see. Yeah, we got a big pot going here, so. Wow. He didn't have anything, just an overpair. Look at that. Just a pair of queens. And this guy didn't have jack. I mean, wow. Boy, that's that's pretty crazy what these guys are doing here. I'll tell you what. So we can see this lock here is a really poor player. Well, he got it in against me with just a gutter. So, I mean... We can see just how bad he is. And this guy here, the mangler, is not much better. Obviously, uh, he's a really poor player. And so we're going to give him a tag here. Um, this isn't. We do have a suited ace here on table two, but it's just not a very good hand. We're going to fold it. Table two looks to be a little tighter table, as we can see, that people don't have. As loose, this poker crazy, I don't know, he's only played one hand. Here on table one, we have some wilder players, obviously. 71-14, 78-6, these guys are pretty loose. We don't really pick up anything here. We're going to fold this. I just mark this guy. He's not really loose passive. He's more of a very loose player. And so we'll mark him accordingly. Uh, I don't really play down at this limit very often. In fact, I can't remember last time I played to PLO. Uh, maybe just to try out, you know, to get my uh, Poker Tracker 4 configured here. And that's about it. I really haven't. Uh, he had the nut flush, it looks like here. Yeah. Really haven't played at this limit. I started at 5 PLO. So I've never, I don't have a lot of experience at this particular limit. Uh, table one here, two, three, four, eight. Um, this isn't even really worth completing. I'm going to fold. It's just a junk, junk hand. And I know it's only a penny, but, you know, it's just, I, you don't want to get in the habit of just completing because the price is low. Eventually, you're just going to, um, you know, be just kind of, uh, blowing off money, drip, drip, dripping off money bit by bit by doing that. And so it's just not a good habit to get into. Um, but uh, I, I don't play these stakes, so I don't, um, you know, have experience against these players. I don't recognize any of these people. I don't play on this site. Uh, so uh, this is just to change things up a bit, giving you a video at a little bit lower stakes and uh, at a different site so you can kind of see what black chip is like. Uh, the, the software, as you can see, is basically the same as, um, as Carbon. Uh, let's see here. King 7, 3, 10 on the button. We are on the button, but this is a really junky hand against very loose players. So I'm just going to fold it. Trying to steal the blinds at these stakes is not good. We're down to three players on this table one. I will check and see if there's another table that I can get. Um, well, there's a four of six over here. Maybe I jump over to this table is what I'm thinking. Might be better. Come on. Okay. All right, we're going to leave this table in a moment. We'll fold this hand. We'll leave this table. Take this seat here to the right of this larger stack. And that 
stretch it, hopefully. Get us in a little better position. All right, time down on this table. That's okay. Deal me in. What did I have here? Eh, not a very good hand. Of course, I would have flopped trip aces, but I don't know if I really would have uh, done much here, so that's okay. Not too concerned. I don't think these games are going to play a lot differently than, um, you know, like four PLO on the sides I play or something like that. I mean, I don't see it being a, a lot different. Yeah, these are going to be, you know, very loose and a lot of people see in flops and a lot of bad play, but I see a lot of very poor play at uh, the sites that I'm at. So I really don't think it's going to be a huge difference, but we'll see. But I'm not expecting a, uh, a big difference. Okay, uh, we're on the button here, but this is a really junky hand, so I'm going to let it go. As I've said, you, unlike No Limit Hold'em, you can't just, you know, steal the blinds because you're on the button really wide. People don't fold, and so even though you're in position, you end up in pots, you know, like this, where you just have absolutely nothing, and you're up against loose players, and um, it's just not a, a profitable play. In No Limit Hold'em, it's, it's a profitable play. You know, it's something that is... Uh, good to do because even with junky cards you're going to be able to make money um, stealing the blinds but when it comes to um, to, to PLO it, it's just a whole different story and this guy moved over from the other table the mangler so we got him on our right that's a good thing he's a pretty loose player we've already got him tagged on table one so we don't pick up much of a hand to start, and this guy raises, so we're just going to fold. My poker tracker is picking up this table. Well, it was at the other table. Needs to swap over. Um, double suited here. Yeah, we're going to raise this. It's a pretty good hand. Queens, double suited. So we'll raise this on table two. And don't expect people to fold, but we'll raise. Um, 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 um. We hit two pair. Kings and sevens, but we do not have clubs. And so we really can't call a pot size bet with three other people in the hand. We just do not have enough. We've got to fold this, unfortunately. It's too easy for somebody to have a flush, sadly. And a nice hand there, but isn't much we can really do. So it is what it is. Um, those are spots where you really got to be able to lay down the hand. Um, we have a dangler here. We do have a suited ace. I'm going to fold this. If I had a little bit better fourth card, I would call. I don't really want to be out of position to everybody at the table, even though we have a fairly decent starting hand here. Uh, we would have picked up a flush draw. That's about it. A gut shot. A gut shot and a flush draw. But, you know, if somebody bets pot, we can maybe call one with our flush draw. He's saf pot. We would call that first bet. But that's about all we could do. Here on table uh, two, we don't have anything. I'm going to let it go. Um, there it goes, Poker Tracker. Okay. Um, on table one, it was close. You know, I could have called there, seen if I hit the flop or not, but being out of position to all the players, I, I, I just, with this dangler here, this hand, um, you know, is it going to notice now we have a really huge pot here and all we have is a draw at this point. We have a pair of kings, but that's not going to be good enough against a huge pot size bet here on table two. I'm going to fold this. So table one, you know, I don't know if we really could have played this big of a pot with just the draw. We have the flush draw. We have top pair, but that's not much. So this guy just had top pair in the flush draw. 
and he wins it. Wow. Unbelievable. Well, that's how, how bad these people are. That's crazy. All he had was a pair of kings, right? A uh, pair of queens here. We're going to raise this on the button. Boy, this rickhead was terrible. There. I don't know what he did. Um, we'll call here. I timed out again. These things are really fast. It's the second time I've done that. Um, we will bet here. We have a flush draw and an overpair. So we're definitely going to be betting. Jack 10. We still have our flush draw. So we're going to call this. Unfortunately, we don't hit anything. That's a crappy river card. So now he bets 60 cents into 90. Problem is any jack beats us. Any jack beats us. Any two pair beats us. Well, we have queens and jacks. Um, but I don't know enough about this guy to call here. This could be, you know, baloney. He could just have a two pair like me, but I'm, I'm not really going to. To it. I just don't know enough about him. He doesn't seem all that crazy. So I'm going to let it go. It's close. That's close. He doesn't, you know, necessarily have a jack there, but in PLO, you just can't make that kind of assumption. You really can't. That was close, though. Uh, if I knew more about him and knew that he was capable of doing that with the red wide range like this mangler, I might have called against the mangler there. Because um, guys like that will bet the river on a paired board because they know it's a scary spot. So, uh, with more knowledge of my opponent, I might have called there. But a lot of times, you just have to be willing to let that go, as I preach. I mean, in a default mode, I would just let it go. It's better to be safe than, than sorry there. Uh, let it go. Wait for a better spot where you can, um, you know, pick up a big hand and, and you can um, you know, you can, you can take advantage. Uh, oh, this guy raised queen jack 6-9. I'm going to call here. Pretty connected hand. We are triple suited. So we pick up two pair. We don't have a flush draw, though. So it's one of those spots where you're going to be careful, but we do have a decent hand. Uh, I'm going to bet pot because I don't have a flush draw with my top two pair. Mangler calls. I'm going to pot it again against a player like this. He folds. Well, if he's drawing, we want to get as much as we can out of him. He's only 20% to hit that flush if he's drawing to the flush. So once the turn comes, we want to get as much as we can when we're in a position like that. When we don't have a draw, and he's quite likely to have one. This guy raises again. This is a 80-60, a very lag player. Um, we do have a suited ace here, but I'm going to let it go out of position. This sole winner is pretty crazy. I'm going to mark him. I mean, 80, 60. That's quite loose. And I'm going to mark him as such. Luckily, he's on our right. So we'll be looking to what I call cherry pick, meaning we're going to, you know, fold our weaker hands or we're going to call with our stronger hands. And our range will be ahead of his. And thus, when we do hit, we're going to be able to win some money off a guy like this. You know, when we just wait, he's going to be playing almost every hand. Uh, knight is fairly connected, but we're not really suited. I'm going to fold this on table one. It's just not that strong of a hand. And we've got the mangler here on table two also to our right, so that's good news. So as you can already see, these stakes, you know, play pretty loose and crazy. There's definitely money to be made at these stakes if you stay patient. Uh, you don't find a lot of, of tag players down here. You don't find a lot of tight players. Um, most of these people are playing, you know, 70-80% of the hands. you got people like this, Table 2, this Escorpion de Tejas playing 47-11. But, and a couple other players playing around the same 50% of hands. But you get a lot of really, really loose players here. And so, you can definitely take advantage of that. That's my dog barking. Um, I'll see if I can limp in here on table one. I could raise, and then he, this guy raises, but that doesn't mean much. We're not going to fold here. 
uh, we'll, we'll see a flop. This hand, though, we're going to fold on table two. So, of course, he bets pot, ace, nine, ace. The problem is we don't have a flush draw here. I had a flush draw. I might think about it. I think he's capable of doing this very wide. But we don't have a flush draw, so we'll let it go. We'll wait for a better spot. The mangler is a very, very poor player and is going to give us a better spot than that. Here we have queens, but we don't have a suit. So it's not really that strong of a hand. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, table one, we're just going to check this. Looks like a good spot you know, to bet an overpair on a board like this, but it's easy for someone to have a straight draw or something like that. It's not really that strong. I'm going to fold this on table two. We're just not suited, not really worth completing. If I had a suit, I would complete. So we get a pot bed here. Um, I'm just going to let it go. I have really no way to improve here other than hitting a, a four or a queen. You know, I just don't have a lot here. Uh, and I'm out of position to him. So I don't think it's really worth it. I'm just going to, you know, stay tight and wait for good spots. And uh, we're going to fold this here. Table two is, the, is I guess, the tighter of the two tables. But both tables have some pretty loose players on them. So, wow. Two pair. Yeah, this, this mangler is terrible. Seven, eight, ten, queen. He just had a straight draw, and then he picked up a pair on the turn. But that was it. That was terrible. But this... Kenny F and Powers didn't have much either. I'll tell you what. He didn't have much either. Table two, gonna fold this. It's no good. This Kenny F and Powers is not very good. So I'll go ahead and mark him down too. These guys are playing pretty loose and crazy. So it's a matter of just, you know, picking up the right hand. We could, we've seen already these guys are willing to stack off with two pair. Okay, they're willing to get their money in with two pair. Uh, five, seven, nine, queen, triple suited. That's not very good. Um, these people are willing to, to get their money in, you know, with, well, even worse than two pair, top pair and a draw or something like that. So we're certainly um, going to just, you know, be looking to pick up some strong hands and then uh, we may be able to slow play against these guys a bit, meaning, you know, check, let them take the lead, let them bet. Guys like this soul winner on table one and this Kenny F and Powers are going to be going to be betting when they have something and so we can sort of sit back and let them take the lead and then maybe push in on the river or something. So hopefully we'll, we'll pick up a spot where we can do that. Table two of a fairly big pot going on here. With Evil Eyed and this Jets 7777. We just really haven't picked up any hands here on table uh, table two. But you can see 75-8 and uh, 75 42 oh it's only a min raise this is a really crappy hand i mean this is a real i do have a suited queen but it's a really crappy hand um i'll call two cents for the video i would probably fold this a lot of the time um it's just not a very good hand um you know i do have a suited queen so i could pick up a flush draw and that's the only reason i i did call against this guy if we pick up a flush or something we're going to win some money but here we just don't really pick up anything so we're going to let it go um again we're just waiting for a spot i think he feels pretty comfortable that he can push us around we're going to fold so hopefully we pick up a spot where where we don't and then we'll be able to uh to win some money and because his aggression factor is pretty strong um this is a fold here um, uh, pair of tens with a suit. We'll, we'll call here. We'll limp in. It's not strong enough to raise here on table two. 
but we do have tens. We do have a nine ten. The three's a dangler, but we do have pretty connected cards. We do have a decent pair. You know, we could hit a set. We could hit a a, a decent draw here with the nine ten. So we'll call decent for a multi-way pot. And we pick up an open ender, 8, 9, 10, jack. The problem is we don't have a flush draw. And against five opponents, when you don't have a flush draw and there's a, a flush draw on the board, you're, you're not in good shape. Unless we can pick up a, you know, a queen or a seven that is not a heart, we just don't have much here. Question is, is it worth six cents into a pot of this size, 30 cent pot. Pot's 30 cents, it costs us six cents. Do we have proper odds here? I don't think we do. We're just not gonna hit, see the flush, we're just not gonna hit enough for the time. That was close, we're not gonna hit enough for the time. Here on table one, we have a big pot going on, it looks like, with lucky box jonky and soul winner. And soul winner's capable of having anything here. Oh, he has a set of twos. Nice hand. Not sure what Soul Winner had. But he lost that one. This is a junk hand here. We're just waiting to try to pick up a good hand against a guy like this or this Kenny F and Powers. So here on table two, you see, we really wouldn't have picked up anything. And yeah, flush. Queen high flush. So... This guy had a straight too, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see when you play a straight on a flush board, you're you're asking for trouble, and that's what happened on table two to this as Scorpion de Tejas played a straight on a flush board and ended up uh, losing, and that's going to happen a, a high percentage of the time in PLO. You know, and again, and that's something I've touched on in, in my videos. You know, in No Limit Hold'em, you might not lay down a straight on a flush board because uh, you just, you know, can't give your opponent credit for having a flush all the time. But it's a different story when you're playing PLO. It's a very different story. Wow, we're down to three players here on table one. That sucks. I can't keep these tables full. <sighs> And we know that this Kenny F. and Powers is going to be playing very aggressively three-handed. There's no question about that. But I will stay here to keep the video going. He's disconnected, so now it's just the two of us. Okay. And we pick up an open-ender. So we'll call this bet. Um, five cents in eight. I'm going to call it. Unfortunately, the river doesn't bring us anything. We don't have anything here on table two. Well, he bets 12 cents. Uh, the problem is all we've got is a pair of threes. We'd have to bluff him here. I just don't think it's worth it. I'd rather wait. We'd have to bluff him here. Um, aces with a suit. We'll definitely call this. I'm not going to three bet it. Kind of lays my hand wide open. That's a really wet board, unfortunately. That's a terrible board for our hand. 9 10 jack with a flush end straight draw. Boy, we're just not picking up anything here on table one. Jack, queen, knights. I mean, we just have air. We could try to bluff the guy. Um, I'm just going to check it. I just don't have anything here at all, so we'll just let it go. And here on table one, we have to fold. It didn't matter. We were going to fold anyway. We didn't have anything here. Our aces, but that's on this board, that's just never going to be good. Um, Boy, this is junk. Pretty chunky. I'm in race, though. I don't want to just limp with the button. Fold this 
on table two. He checks. We're going to bet because we really don't have showdown value here. Well, we pick up an open-ended straight draw. We will call here. And he bets again. Well, I'd have to try to bluff him. You know, I'm just not pick. I'm just not hitting anything here. Um, I'm just gonna let it go. I could try to re-raise him, but I'd rather wait and hit a hand. You know. So I guess this guy's not. Oh, he is playing finally. Okay. Um. I'm going to let this go. It's not that good. I want to take a look at the lobby. I have any other games going? No. Just the 25s. Nothing in between. Okay. Would like to have more players at the table for more. But not much I can do when... Here, you know, we just aren't picking up any hands on table one. So this guy is just, you know, betting, 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 playing. But, you know, I've got to pick up some semblance of a hand. You notice he hit a straight there and won that hand. Uh, but if I'm not hitting anything, it's, it's pretty tough. Here we do pick up aces with a suit. So we're going to raise this, obviously. Of course, we don't pick up our flush draw. Ace, queen, nine, seven. We'll fold that. Uh, but we are going to bet we have our over pair. And we actually pick up a pot. First one. I think it's the first one we've won on this table. I really do. This isn't a bad hand here. We have a... Uh, a suited ace. We have some good Broadway cards, so we're going to call. Um, we pick up top pair, but not much else than that. We have a backdoor flush draw. Queen high, but that's about it. We, it's a fairly coordinated board. There is no flush draw out there. I guess that, that that's good in a sense. But it's easy for somebody to have a strong draw here, and we don't have any part of that. All we really have is a pair of tens. I don't really know that that's worth continuing here. Out of position, I'm going to let it go. Um, I just need a little bit more than that to be willing to continue on table one. This is uh, not very good. Whenever you got three of one in your hand, even though we do have a suited ace here, you just don't want to play these hands. There's so few ways for you to improve. Ace, two, three, five. Uh, we're not suited to the ace, and we're early-ish middle position, I guess. I I'm going to let it go. I might limp behind if I was in late position, you know, but the only kind of straight you're going to hit is a really low one. You can get a second best hand, so it's it's really not that good on table two. It's, it's, you could limp, but it's nothing special. So we've got aces. We don't have a suit. Uh... We'll min raise here, but we're going to raise. We have the button, so we'll definitely raise. Uh, not the best of flops. Not the worst of flops. Not the best of flops. We do have a gutter. We have our aces. I'm going to bet this. Uh, if somebody has a 10, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Now we pick up a full house. Um, so we're going to continue to bet. Oh, okay, he raises us. So we'll happily put the money in. See what he does. He has jacks over tens, we have aces over tens. Well, we finally got the spot we're waiting for. And uh, we took a big pot off of him. So that worked out pretty good. Check here on table two. As I said, if you stay patient, sometimes good things can happen. And that time it did. And we took a full stack off of him. Uh, this is a junker hand. We're going to fold this. 
so that worked out nicely. Queen Jack five. We just have a pair of queens here. We have top pair, but we don't have any kind of draw. So that was a nice hand there on table one. That worked out. Uh, we'll fold this. We, but that was a cooler. You know, I can't say that he misplayed that. Um, we just don't have enough here on table two. We don't have enough of a draw. So four, five, six, eight. We'll raise this. It's a decent rundown. Not a great rundown, a low rundown, but a decent rundown. If the right flop comes, we could get lucky. And we have a uh, we have a straight draw here. Now we have two pair, two pair and a, and a weak flush draw. I am going to bet this again. Table two, we picked up aces with a suit. I don't know if we can get any more value from him. I'm going to raise this on table two. We did win that pot on table one. Um, Not the best flop. But against the mangler, and we're going to bet it. We're going to 2 2 3 8. We're going to fold this. So we pick up a flush draw here. Check, see what he does. We do have a flush draw plus our over pair. And we hit our flush. So we'll bet. Try to get some value here on table two with our nut flush. Maybe he picked up a straight or something here, two pair. He might be willing to call. Um, we're not suited to the ace. I'm going to fold. I could call this on table one, but I'll let it go. Out of position. It's close, though. We have this dangler, though, the six. Queen, two, three, eight on the button. Eh, the cards are not very connected. I'm going to let it go. Here, we have a suited ace, so we'll raise this. We're just men raising here. We could raise more, but this hand isn't that good. I don't want to start building a big pot with, you know, fairly junker cards. We do have a suited ace, so we're happy to, to see a flop. We hit bottom pair. That's all we really have here. Um, I mean, we know he's betting a lot, but I just don't have hardly any ways to improve. So I'm going to let it go. You notice I'm just only staying in pots where I have some potential. I'm not just, even though we know he's betting very wide, this Kenny F and Powers, I'm not just going to, you know, call bets because I think he's full of crap. Uh, in PLO, it's so easy for somebody to hit a hand even when they don't have much. You know, they just get lucky. And so it just isn't worth it to be floating people and doing stuff like that. Here is not even worth two cents. This hand is junk. We're just going to fold it. You know, we stacked him because we waited for a good hand, and we're just going to continue to play that strategy, even though at this point these guys know that we're playing very tight. Here on table two, we have a decently connected hand. We do have a dangler with the deuce. Um, I don't know if it's worth calling a raise. I would have limped behind with this hand. I don't think it's quite worth calling a raise, though, even though we're in position on this guy. So I'm just going to let it go. We would have flopped a, uh, a nut straight, though. But, of course, with the flush draws out there, would have had to play it very fast. Mm, a336. Three, three, Lousy hand. Here, jack 10, 3, 5. It's just a junky hand. We'll let it go. Quickly look and see if there's any other games going. No. As you can see, there's not a lot of uh, traffic on this site. It's one of the reasons I don't play this site too often. Um, we just don't get a lot of traffic here. There aren't, uh, a lot, at least at Omaha. I think at No Limit Hold'em, it's decent. And I have played a little bit of No Limit here on uh, Black Chip. It's not one of the best, but it's not bad. Um, but for for Omaha, you just don't get enough traffic. Um, 
I'll go ahead and min raise this on the button. It's not a great hand, but I do have position suited 10, uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. And we pick up a flush draw. Not a lot more than that, so we're going to call a bet here. Um, now we'll fold here on table uh, 2. So we bet 17 into 26. Um, I'm going to call this one. I think he's been doing this a lot. We'll see if we can get lucky. Unfortunately, we don't. We don't pick up our flush. I was hoping to hit a flush. It's only a 10 high, but against one player and a guy this loose, we could easily be good. Now, at this point, all we have is our pair of eights, and I just don't think that that's going to be good enough here, so I'm going to let this go. I could have maybe folded the turn, but this guy has been so aggressive and so active that I felt like if I hit my hand, I could be in good shape. So we decided to go ahead and, and play that hand. Um, fold here on table two. Here we have a decent rundown. They fold to us. That was a decent rundown, actually, with a, a gap, six, seven, nine, ten. That's a, a, a hand you definitely like to see a flop with if you can. This 7782 is not very good. Um, he limps, though. I'll complete three-handed, but it's not a really good hand. No question. It's, it's pretty weak, and we don't get much of this flop. We do hit a gut shot here, but on a paired board, you know, it's not really that good. Um, only really a 7 or a 10 can help us. There's not much else. Um, we now pick up an open ender and a very weak flush draw, but that's about it. Here on table 1, it's just not a lot. 9, 6, 2, 8. I'm going to be dumping this hand. I'm going to call his bet, though. Again, I just think he's betting very wide here. Um, eights and nines. We have two. We have two pair here. I'm gonna bet into him. See what he does. Oh, okay. He had a straight. Wow, I'm surprised he didn't raise. Okay, so he did hit a straight there. But not the nut straight. Okay, not the nut straight. And we finally picked up some other players here. Okay, so he had straight, but not the nut straight. Okay. I was trying to represent the straight there on that river. So I represented the hand that he had basically on table one uh, because it was obvious we were drawing there. And I felt like if I could represent that hand, if he didn't have something, he'd have to fold, which he probably would have. But unfortunately, he hit the hand that we repped. So that's never a good thing when you're trying to rep a hand and your opponent has that hand. That's uh, usually not going to work out well for you. But it was a very small pot, so I'm okay with that. A small double suited here. I'm going to try to limp this in. It's not really strong enough. Eight three. Our side cards are terrible. So I don't really want to raise here, but I'll try to get in cheaply and see what happens. Now, there's a tiny little raise, so we can call that. Um, I could have min raised maybe, but I didn't really want to. Uh, now we get 20 cents from this guy. I don't know anything about this guy. Now, this isn't a terrible hand here, double suited, but our side cards are junk. Um, and he's short stacked. He's trying to get enough of his stack in so that he can, um, you know, shove a flop. He gets a call or two and he's just, you know, going to have just a pot size bet left. Uh, you know, a stack is going to be the size of the pot. So I'm going to let this go. If I had better side cards, I might well call here because this hand could flop pretty well double suited on table one. But um, his stack is really short and... Uh, we're going to get a lot of flops like that one where we just don't have enough. You know, we would have had just the queens. No flush draw. And like I predicted, he shoves all in. See, he just has a pot size bet left. So that's totally what I, you know, what the strategy is of a short stacker is to get as much money in pre-flop as possible and then just have an easy shove on the flop. And that's what they want to do. Well, he hit the Kenny F and Powers hit the straight. Wow, he got lucky there. I mean, look at that hand, 2-jack, 10-5, horrible hand. This guy at aces and nines, and he gets lucky and hits it. I mean, I'm sorry, that's, look at that hand, 2-5, 10-jack, that's pure junk. And he freaking hits uh, a straight. Wow. Unreal, just unreal. That's just, just pure luck, I have to say. That's, 
you know, and then he, he stacks, of course, this guy was short, this Lomakin, but he stacks two players. Wow. That's just insane. What did Lomakin have? Just wanted to see what Lomakin had. Well, oh, he had a straight two. Lucky box jonkey had a straight two, but straight to the nine. Okay, so he had a lower straight. Okay, that answers that question. We'll call this here. We have a suited king. Not really good side cards here on table one, but a suited king. Here we have a queen high flush draw. Um, I'll let it go. Queen high is not that good. This guy, you notice this guy who raised is not very loose. 44-3. He could easily have a higher flush draw. I'm going to let it go. What is it? A six cent bet? We have top pair. I'm going to call one. This guy does bet. Let's see if we pick up some equity on the turn. Um, we don't really pick up any equity. I was hoping to pick up a flush draw on the turn, but we don't. I'm going to let this go. We just have a top pair here. Gut shot. That's just not enough on table one here to really continue. If I'd have picked up a flush draw, I might have called against a guy this loose. Boy, it's another straight. Unbelievable. But he wins with a flush, so good for him. I'll go ahead and complete here on table two. Decently connected hand. I'll fold this. I have a suited ace, but it's not that good. Ace four jack. So we pick up top two pair here. We're going to bet this on table two. Obviously, two pair isn't a monster hand in PLO, but it's good enough to try to uh, take down against these two players for sure. It's a fairly dry board. There's no flush draw. Board pairs, not exactly good. Uh, but I'm going to bet again. And he folds. Yeah. He's going to let us know if he has something stronger. If we get raised, then we just pitch it. You know. But I don't really want to give over control of the hand to him. And he's a fairly passive player. So I felt like I could probably take that hand. But again, small money. I'm not going to play a monster pot with two pair. Uh, this is pretty junky here on table two. We're going to fold this. Here on table one, another decent sized one. I mean, this Kenny Flowers is just playing every. Kenny Powers is playing every single hand. Every single hand. Uh, so, you know, we're just looking for a spot, again, like we did before, where we could pick up something against him. We just want to try to make sure that our range is a lot stronger than his. And that's a strategy that I recommend at these low stakes PLO. is kind of what I call cherry picking. Because even though you fold a lot of hands, the people don't really make the proper adjustments against you. They still will pay you off if they hit a decent hand. You know, if they have second or third best hand, they're still going to pay you off. Now, of course, I, I coolered Kenny. He had a, a, a full house also. He had second best full. He wasn't going to fold that, but um, not quite strong enough here on table two. But my point is, is that these guys are not really thinking at level two or three. And so, even though you're playing very tight, you know, here I'm 37-18, not that tight actually, but here on table two, I'm 15-8 I'm because I haven't gotten many cards. But I still guarantee that a person on the looser side is going to pay me off. But this table has a lot tighter players, and so they're maybe a little less likely. But guys like Kenny F. and Powers, this Lomakin, they're going to pay you off no matter what. Um they're not going to suddenly say, well, this guy's really tight, so I better be careful. Uh, maybe if they have a marginal hand, but if they have a strong hand, 
they're you know they're not going to say well I only have the third best nuts he could have the first or second best nuts they're just going to say I got a really good hand I'm putting the money in so you, you can still get paid off and of course they're playing such a wide 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 range that when you do play hands you're going to be ahead of their range most of the time that's really the philosophy behind my whole cherry picking is that I choose my hands carefully that I play I'm going to fold this on table two and when I do play a hand 90% of the time I'm ahead of their range so if I hit and they hit I'm going to be ahead of them and that's what I'm looking to do is I want to hit a hand and they also hit a hand but I have a better hand because my range is stronger and that's really it's just that simple you know we're playing such a tighter range in them that we're just going to be ahead of them most of the time and that's what we want to do. Here on table two, we just haven't gotten hardly any cards. Uh, we just haven't had a chance to play many hands. And uh, looks like Kenny Power sat down on this table, and he's directly on our right, so that's perfect. Here on table one, you're across from us, so we don't have position on him very often. But now we're going to have position on him five out of six hands on table two. That's going to be perfect. That's what we're looking for. Um, this is just a junky hand on table one. It's not worth calling a raise. Table two, we have a decent hand. Uh, the suited ten doesn't help a ton, but we do have king, queen, ten. The seven's kind of a dangler, but it's not a bad hand. And so we'll see a flop. We pick up uh, well, a ten high flush draw. That's about it. A gut shot. We have a gut shot. Six, seven, nine, ten. A gut shot at 10 high flush draw. Nothing special, but we have some equity here. We might call a bet. Um, I'm going to call one here, even though it's a pot size bet. See if we get lucky. We hit a king. Um, that gives us another gut shot. So we have a double gutter plus a flush draw. So we certainly have some equity here. Um, as many as 15 outs. The problem is, is our flush draw good enough? This is a close spot. Mm. I'm going to call. It's a close spot, though. We do hit the nut straight. Ace, king, jack, queen, 10. No flush out there, so we're going to bet it. We could be chopping with somebody easily. Somebody else could have queen 10. But we're obviously going to try to get some value here on table 2 as we did hit our draw. The worst we can do is chop here. There's no better hand out there. He may have a two pair, be trying to decide. Huh, they both fold. So we win a nice size pot. So that worked out. As few hands as we've played here on table two, we've won you know almost half a buy-in. So not bad considering that we've just had no cards, no cards at all. Uh, that was a close one on the turn, though. You know that one there, we probably just barely had the odds to call there. But with both of these players in, I felt like if I could hit something, I could, you know, make some money there. Unfortunately, they didn't call, so I didn't make any money once I hit my my draw fold here on table one but uh now do we want to even complete here this is a pretty junky hand i'm just going to pitch it on table two uh but that one there on table two was was very close in terms of you know calling that turn bet and i ultimately did decide to to call and we did hit our draw we had a double gut shot plus a flush draw our flush draw wasn't that strong but uh against a guy like kenny f and powers and even a fairly loose passive like Evil Eyed, um, we, we could easily have been good. So, and the fact that he didn't call the river bet clearly he wasn't on a high enough draw. So, it did work out. But that was a close spot. If I didn't have both those gut shots and the flush draw, I would have folded there. With just one draw, I'm never going to call there. It's just not worth it. You don't get the odds. But I had three draws basically, and so I felt that was worth uh, calling. <sighs> a 
before king 10 9. Now, not a very good hand. The king isn't suited. Um, we're just going to let it go. We're just going to let it go. It's just not strong enough. Mark a few players here. Just so, in case I play this again. I will have some of these guys marked. Uh, we're going to fold this. And this scorpion player is a loose passive. So we will mark him accordingly. Just in case I get here again, I've got some people tagged. This guy also is a loose passive at 45-2. Oh, queen, queen, 5-8. Um, two double suited. Oh, well, I wanted to get it to six cents. I misclicked that, but that's okay. That's all right. We can see a flop and see what happens. What happens here? Oh, we get re-raised. Um, double suited, I will call this. It's close because it's against a short stack. And we hit a set of queens, so we're not going anywhere against this guy. Pretty good flop for a top set. There's really no other draw. And he calls us. What does he have? Ace, king, four, jack? He doesn't have anything. Thank you, sir. We'll take your stack. I mean, that's just a terrible play. This hand is not nearly strong enough to be three betting. And so uh, that was a terrible play. Now, he didn't have very much money, but uh, we're happy to take his uh, you know, 30 big blinds. Uh, six, seven, eight, ace. Okay, I'll call him in raise here. I'm out of position, but I'll see a flop. We do pick up a flush draw and a pair. Uh, I'm going to bet half pot here. I'm going to try to control the size of the betting, try to prevent him from, he min raises, we'll call that. Now we hit an ace, so we have two pair. I'm going to check, kind of disguise the strength of my hand. But I'm going to obviously call this bet. And we have aces and sevens. Oh, I'm going to bet half pot here. If we get raised, we're going to fold, I think. But I am going to bet half pot here. Oh, there's a draw out there. We could have hit. We're a pretty tight player. I'm trying to use my image here. This guy's somewhat of a thinking player, and uh, we do have a tight image, so I think I can represent a, a pretty strong range here, and he does fold. So now against a, a crazy player, I would probably maybe check there and evaluate the size of his bet. We did have two pair. It's not like we had nothing there. With nothing, I wouldn't have uh, have done that. But um, I could limp here, but I'm going to fold this on table one here. Table two, we have a pair of kings and a gut shot. That's not going to be enough to bet. But anyways, on table one, I felt that I could just represent a pretty strong hand there. And because I'm tight, he just was going to give me credit a lot of the time. What do we got here? Ten jack, queen, king, nine. We have a straight here, don't we? Uh, okay. I'll make a small bet. We do have a straight to the king. Nine, ten jack, queen, king. We don't have the nut straight. And we won. But that's what this guy, I figured he might call with a worse hand. So, So we didn't have the nut straight, but we did have a straight there. Let's see what he had. We'll fold this on table. I'm just kind of curious what uh, Kenny Powers had there. Not going to tell us? Oh, doesn't tell us what he had? Hmm. 
I thought it would tell us what he had. Hmm. Okay. Doesn't really matter. It's a tiny pot. So we're not doing badly here, considering how few hands we've played. Uh, we're up more than a buy-in on table uh, one and table two, close to half a buy-in. Not quite. How long have we been uh, going here? An hour. So I guess we will go ahead and uh, finish out here. We've been playing for a while. Uh, queen, nine, nine, ten. Uh, let's try lumping this for the sake of the video. We'll sit out on our big blind. Same on this one. We'll sit out on our big blind. So we'll play one more round. What happened here? We got raised. Um, okay. We'll call. See if we get lucky and hit something here. And we hit a full house. That's not too bad of a hand. Fold this on table one. Twenty twenty. Hmm. Do we raise or do we just call? I'm gonna call and then try to raise on the turn. Pretty good card there. Somebody could have a smaller full house, a flush draw. And now we're going to be putting the money in. Let's get in as much money as we can here with uh, the best possible full house at this point. Don't want another card to come to be better, and this is the time where we want to try to do it. So he calls us. And... Uh, in we go. Not going anywhere. Bingo! And he had a smaller full house. Sweet. Sweet. We took a huge pot there. 400 big blinds? No, 200 big blinds? That's a nice pot. That's a nice way to kind of end things up. Took a nice huge stack from him and this guy. That was a nice hand. Uh, we'll fold this on table too. That's a very nice hand. So now we've won... Uh, four buy-ins. Uh, almost, right? Three and a half buy-ins? Yeah, three and a half buy-ins here on uh, 350 big blinds. We've won more than 350 big blinds on table one. That's a very nice uh, pot there. I'm going to replay that in a minute. Uh, take a look at that hand and how we did there. If I can. Move this down. This was the hand here, and we're going to take a look at that hand in a moment. So we're sitting out here on table uh, one, and that's fine. We're just about to sit out here on table two. We've got a few more hands. Let's put this down there. We'll watch this in a minute. Fold this. As soon as we sit out on both of these, we're going to replay that hand and take a look and see, because we did manage to stack two players. I want to take a look at how they played it and if we played it optimally or not. Um, but I think that uh, that worked out obviously very, very well for us. Uh, so again, notice as tight as we've played, Although, uh, yeah, 23-9. Here we are over here. They moved around because we're out. 23-9. Kenny Powers was, with the bottom full house, was happy to put in all that money against us. And he put in a couple hundred big blinds there. Um, that's not very good. I mean, what are we really going to be playing there? I'll go ahead and limp here. With a double suited hand, three five seven, and then the queen. Not a great hand, normally wouldn't, but since it's our last hand before we sit out, what the heck? I'll try to play one cheaply. And we do. We hit trips. Not too bad. I'm gonna bet this. We don't have the best of um kickers. You'd rather have an ace kicker here, but we do have trips. There's only one other seven in the deck. So I do want to try to get some value uh, here. And we have three possibilities of hitting a full house, a five, a queen, or a three. Doesn't come. 
but I am going to bet this. We still have two, two, uh, uh, you know, another shot to hit a full house. There's a flush draw out there. Don't really want to give him a free card at that or let him control. He does call. So, hmm. That's a tough spot. I'm going to bet fold here rather than check call. I'm going to bet half pot. If he raises me, I'm going to have to probably fold. But I'm going to bet half pot here. We've played very tight. We try to use our image. I think he can call down with wider. Uh, and he folds. Yeah. But if he raised me, I'm going to have to fold this hand. I didn't hit a full house. Uh, he could have a 10x hand or something. So, But that worked out nicely. Uh, so we finished up... Uh, we have $12 here and we bought in for four. So we finished up uh, four buy-ins, which is quite nice. Let's take a quick look at that hand where we won a monster pot here on table one. Uh, I think we can replay the hand. At least it says we can. Let's see if that works. Yes, here we go. Okay. So here we're sitting. Let's see what they had. So Kenny... F and Powers, uh, yeah, he hit trip twos on the flop, so he wasn't going anywhere, and then he had a full house on the turn. This Judy D also had trip twos, didn't hit a full house, though. Okay, so we, we really got very fortunate there. Both of these people had trips, and this is why I've told you guys a million times in, uh, in PLO, never assume that somebody doesn't have the case, you know, card in this case. Now, here, both of our opponents had, you, you might think, well, there's only two twos left in the deck. They can't both have a deuce. Uh, yes, they can, and they both do, as you see. Lucky for us, but if you were playing just like a pair of... I've seen people stack off here with like a pair of aces. They look at this board, and they say, well, look how dry this board is. Two, two, four, nine. What can my opponents have? This isn't no limit hold'em, and they can have a deuce real easily, and both of them did. And so let's play this hand back here. Uh, actually, I'm going to play it one at a time if I can. Uh, okay, so I limped in, got a raised here, and everybody called, and so I went ahead and called. I do have position, except for on this player here, and uh, we're suited to the queen. We have connected cards, a pair. We could get lucky and, and flop something. Now, I certainly didn't expect to flop this, but... You know, I was going to pitch this hand the moment the flop came. So we flop the stone cold nuts unless somebody has a pair of twos. We actually know the stone cold nuts. We have a second nuts. But we have a very strong hand, obviously. So we get a large bet here. Kenny F. and Powers with trip twos bets. Uh, half pot, actually. Gets, of course, called by Judy. So I just call here. I could try to raise right off the bat. But I think I'd rather wait. There are obviously cards that, that could come to hurt me. If one of these people have a big pair, say they have a pair of queens, uh, well, I have queens, a pair of kings, and a king comes, then uh, you know, I'm going to have problems. But I felt it was best at this point to just call, uh, uh, try to build a pot, uh, and then raise on the turn. And uh, so luckily the turn for us comes a very good card. It puts a flush draw out there. So somebody might try to chase the flush. And it's a low card. It's below a knight. So we still have the nuts unless somebody has a pair of deuces. No one can have a better hand other than quads. And if they have quads, then they're going to get my stack. Okay. And uh, we're actually 400, uh, 200 big blinds deep here with Kenny. So that's really nice. Judy doesn't have any money. So Kenny goes ahead and bets about two-thirds pot. Judy, of course, calls. Now we put in the raise. I thought this is the best. I don't really want a big card to come in the river and maybe give somebody a bigger hand. And plus, if he is chasing a draw, I want him to commit now on the river. He, If he doesn't, you know, if he's chasing a full house and doesn't hit it or chasing another draw, like he has 3-5 here or something like that or whatever he could have, who knows, I, I, I he could give up. So I want to get the money in now if I can. He calls. Now, at this point, he's fairly pot committed, although you're never pot committed in a cash game. Uh, Jack comes on the river, and at this point, if he has Jack, Jack, or whatever, fine, but the money's going in. Uh, he actually checks 
because uh, maybe he's a little bit worried at this point. I don't know. Uh, I, of course, go all in. He's not going to fold, and uh, bingo. We take it down, and we win a monster pot. You know, we win a, a very, very big pot there. Uh, so that worked out really nicely. So that's going to do it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and it, I hope it showed that you can play, you know, really quite tight here at 2 PLO and still make some really good money. I won four buy-ins, and so you just want to wait for good hands, cherry pick your spots against your loose opponents, and uh, you notice that they'll still pay you off, even though you've played tight as you can possibly play. Here on table two, I played 24-9. Um, I actually started out a lot tighter and got some hands at the end. Table one, 23-9. It's almost identical. Tightest player at the table by far, and uh, I still did well. So uh, it just goes to show that tight is right. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for today. Uh, as always, please leave any feedback, any questions, anything in the forums, and uh, I'll see you next time. This has been CF The Natural for grinderschool.com.